It's about time we discuss how coding interviews are completely broken in 2023. The way I see it, tech interviews have never been perfect, but that's fine. I mean, it's really hard for any field to really craft a perfect approach, but I truly feel in software engineering, the gap is just too big. There are four reasons why I think the coding interview is broken in 20. Number one is the algorithmic obsession. Number two is the culture fit vagueness. Number three is the marathon of a process. And number four are those damn recruiters. So those are the four reasons. Let me know in the comment section below which one you have faced during your interview process. I'm actually very curious. So let's start with the algorithmic obsession, aka lead code. Now we've talked about lead code and the problem with lead code on this channel before. But let's dive into a bit more detail. Lead code style questions are designed to be hard on purpose. They test you on data structures and algorithm for the purpose of weeding out candidates who somehow just puffed up and fluffed up their resume with buzzwords words to somehow sneak past the filtering process into getting a technical interview. And don't get me wrong, data structures and algorithms are very important even beyond just using them for a lead code interview. They fundamentally make you a better engineer. But to judge a candidate solely on their ability to regurgitate an algorithm, I think that sets up both sides for failure. I've seen strong candidates with great experience, almost senior engineers, not get a job because they couldn't solve a dynamic programming challenge. That was a hard leco question. But on the flip side, the side that I'm more cautious about is I know people who are stellar at leco. They can solve any question for you, no problem, even optimize it, give you that little ribbon on top. But when it comes to core engineering, debugging software engineering, they're hopeless. They're helpless. They can't do anything. They didn't learn the fundamentals of programming while they were studying and grinding leak code. But I think another point to consider on why the leak code style technical interview is not the best approach is because you can be a senior engineer with five years of infrastructure experience using cloud, doing whatever. But if you find yourself in a position where you're out of the job and you need to start applying, well, you're gonna have to set time from a week to even a month to restudy data structures and algorithms, and even more specifically, just grind lead code, need code 75, whatever it is, to get you on track and to pass your technical interview. And right now, that's very hard because it's a pressure cooker situation, and you really put pressure on yourself that if you even get a technical interview, you really want to pass and impress your interviewers. And before we go to the next point, make sure you guys click that subscribe button. We're so close to 10K subscribers. Thank you guys so much. It means the absolute world to me. Even though I don't like lead code style interviews, there is something I think is almost as equally as bad. And that is the culture fit or the vagueness of what is a culture fit. I don't even use, I don't know what that means. What this basically means is even if you ace your technical interview and your sim design interview and whatever else they throw out you, they can just decide, I, well, you, you didn't fit the culture here. We, we, you, we, you just don't fit, okay? It's for your own good. We don't need you. You don't need us. It's let's go our separate ways, which is such a pain because you just spent so much time grinding, studying, answering their questions, spending your time to even get to this position. And for them to just say no, I think it's important to know about the culture for, for a team, but let's just be honest with each other up front and at the beginning. So I think it's a team responsibility to set that up and for the candidate to read that and make sure there's no surprises down the line. And the third point that I know a lot of people have to deal with is just how fucking long these interview processes can be. So on my screen here, I have basically designed what happens in a technical interview through this chart. As you can see, there's essentially three stages, but the last one called the on-site, which is this bigger chunk here that says the behavioral, technical, and system design interview, there can be more than just three. They can have multiple technical, multiple behavioral, multiple system design. It's just the on-site process. We can see in the beginning, there's the recruiter screener, which this could be a pain in the ass by itself, which I'll get into in my fourth point. And then you have the technical screener, which we talked about, and then the on-site. And this on-site is literally a full day of you being grinded on your interview capabilities. Can you answer our behavioral questions? Do you know what our leadership principles are? Can you design this? Can you code this? Can you do this for a full day? And sometimes if you're unlucky, it can even be longer than one day and bleed to two and forbid 
it can bleed to three. And the worst part, the time between the recruiter screener or the technical screener, that could be a week to two weeks. And then the time between the first technical screener to on site, that could be another week or two weeks. So a candidate looking to get hired from the time they apply to the time they even hear back to potentially getting the offer letter, that could be upwards of four weeks. This is why a lot of people who are going through the interview loop try to schedule all their interviews in the same week. They try to plan it and time it so well that they tell their interviewers and the recruiters at the beginning that, hey, can we set up the onsite or the technical in this week because I'm going to set all of them up. And what this is, is their interview gauntlet because they don't want to be spread. They don't want to constantly be under the pressure of learning and studying lead code or other behavioral questions. They want to get it all done and just like finals or midterms, just get it all over in one week, hell week, but it happens and it takes so long and the planning really has to be precise for this to work out perfectly. All right, and for the last point, I think this doesn't get talked about enough. We've all seen the memes, but it, it is the quality of the recruiters in software engineering or in the tech space. I swear, some of the worst individuals, and I hate to say this because there's some really good recruiters, but the bad ones really dilute it and really leave a sour taste in the majority of programmers and software engineers' mouth. Most of the time, they don't know what they're looking for. They're asking you questions. They don't know what the right answer is, but they're trying their best, but they don't really care. And you're in this weird dynamic where they have to pretend like you matter to them and you have to pretend like you care about them and their questions just so you guys can get through this painful recruitment process and get your fingers on a keyboard into a technical lead code style question where on your resume, you have JavaScript and the recruiter says, we're looking for a Java developer and you, yes, you are perfect for it. It says Java, right? They never give you a straight answer when you ask them for the salary expectations. They always try to juke you and giving you a side answer and saying it's a range based on a bunch of factors that we'll go through in the interview process, which that's a huge red flag. You should find the salary expectations, the band at the start of your interview process so you don't waste your time. But the thing that gets the most people the angriest is when the recruiter ghosts you. This is not only something that I truly wish there has to be a feedback loop so they can stop doing this, but it is also one of the most heartbreaking things to happen in 2023 right now. Getting a recruiter to email you back after you applied can make someone's day, week, or even month. So when you see that email and say, hey, we want to move forward with your interview process, can you schedule a 30-minute call with me where we can discuss your resume more in detail? And then you do it and you think it goes well, and you don't hear back from them for a week, so then you email them back and still no answer. So a few more days pass and you email them again. And then you find out two, three weeks down the line, they just completely ghosted you. And that is the worst. They should at least tell you straight up, hey, you know what? It was great talking to you, but I just find your experience kind of lacking. I don't think you're going to fit for this role. I'm going to move forward. Don't leave them hanging. A recruiter's responsibility should be to give the good news and the bad news. Don't have some golden carrot dangling in front of a candidate who's really hungry for a job because they've been looking for the past six months after being laid off in February. That is the worst you can do. And if you're a recruiter watching this video, don't do that. Be better. Be a good recruiter. So the next time I make this video, I'm talking about how good the recruiters are in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe for more. And I got to leave you guys off with two things. One, what was your best interview experience? I'm curious. What was a good interview experience? Did you have a good recruiter? Let me know. And two, you got to power it.